is the year 3069. The Earth has been destroyed by ozone depletion, rendering the planet a vast wasteland. The Earth's vegetation has been completely destroyed and the oceans have been dried. The human race has devolved into a form of a nomad with no memories of the Earth's past. The only memory they have is that of the present, a present which includes only virus, famine, and death. Man has once again turned into a primitive creature, living in caves, eating insects and pigs. There was no explanation for the sun, the desert, the rain. When food and shelter are plentiful, the tribe search for answers in the wreckage of the planet and try to educate themselves. Like generations before them, the hunger for knowledge was never satisfied. Beyond that, what happens to a man who sleeps forever, never waking? Was there somehow a spirit that took care of them in the darkness of death? Then one day, by accident, an answer was found. In the Earth's debris, the nomad found a book that may hold all the answers. Miss Haiti Hopkins, you've been arrested and brought before us for your unspeakable crimes against mankind. You've butchered, mangled, stabbed, and mutilated the beautiful people. People who obeyed us, valued our beliefs, and followed the guidelines of the status quo. People that will be missed and remembered, unlike you. You abandoned a normal life of mediocrity. And for what? What good did it do you to fall out of step? You're now this caged animal that will be sentenced to death and spat upon. You murdered people that lived their lives like you should have lived. You butchered a lifestyle that could have been yours. And you, a once respectable person from our community, how could you turn your back on us? Your foolish games of rebellion were pathetic and have now come to this dreadful end. We are the ones that have stopped you. You and your so-called family's doctrine have reached your final chapter. You will be forgotten and never missed. But we must dissect, pick at your brain, so we can find out how one of us can turn into an individual. You shaved your head, sliced an X in your forehead. Can't you see these are just foolish attempts to break free from us? You can never escape from the moral majority. We will always win. We own this world and we will rape it as we please. You will never stop us. Your voice and your family's voices have been silenced and will never be heard. Tell us everything. Yes, please. You must amuse us with your stories of how you ended up here. So far down the wrong road. When were you born? Why did you choose to follow such a misguided messiah? When were you born? Born? When was I born? You've got to try to grasp it, man. How that question has no meaning. Not for me. Not for any of us who lived with him. We changed clothing, changed expressions, just changes, you know? Changes are changes. They're not progress. They're not regression. And they were a change. And we had to change because we cannot be associated with your human race. We are not responsible for the crimes you have committed against each other on this planet. We live every day for every day, but not in your day. But you have me imprisoned for crimes you think I have committed, which I am completely innocent. And when I tell you the story of the family, maybe you will understand. And if you are smart, you'll join us. Because it's gonna come down, and gonna come down fast. Helter Skelter is gonna come down on you and your children. When I met him, it was my rebirth. My awakening. It all seems like a big, beautiful, and wonderful dream. But it was a big, beautiful, and wonderful dream. <laughs> coming down on you and your children. <laughs> I have no mercy for you.
what I am saying makes no sense to you. Your soul is contaminated with the lies of your parents and television. You watch television as your factories are slowly destroying your world, harvesting this planet like it is a cheap whore. Why do you sit there watching me with your accusing eyes when all I try to do is save you? Your eyes are dead, you cannot see. The world you live in is dead, and it is a world I so happily left behind when I met him. I remember when I first met him. It seems so long ago. Get off! Calm down, woman! I have heard your distress call, and I am here to save you! Come to me! Have you ever made love to the Son of God? Gosh, no, but I'm really new in town, and, and my job keeps me really busy, and... Let me into your three holes, just like the nails entered my hands and feet at cavalry. Look, I just met you, and I really don't know if I will let you fuck my hands and feet. It's just too intimate, and I think impossible. Not those holes, woman. These holes. This one. And that one. And especially this one. Uh. Oh, yummy. By any chance has the Son of God been in prison? Yes. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. 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 How can I be bleeding? I am hardly a virgin. You are a virgin. You are reborn unto me. Your blood is the symbol of your baptism, your rebirth. Oh wait, never mind, I'm having my period. But I really take your symbolism. Your sacrifice of blood is a gift! And for that, I will save you! You may come to the altar and worship me now! I am saved! I am saved! I was lost and now I am found. The void in my soul is now filled. Okay, okay. Now you can worship me with a sacrificial hand job. Your man love juice quenches my thirst for knowledge. 
just like if I was a lost kitten or a lost sheep or any other animal that might happen to get lost. And I got lost right there and you found me. I will do what you tell me to do. I will be your apostle and follow you anywhere. Like a lost pigeon or, or a lost ostrich or, or hummingbird or a lost cat. All right, and... all right! I get the analogy! Would you please shut up and suck my cock? Sorry. What is your name, woman? So I know what to say when I shoot my multiple loads all over you. Susan Hatkins. You are now named Haiti. Haiti May Klutz. Oh, I always wanted an AKA. Just like if someone found a lost kitten and didn't know its real name, they rename it with a different name. And what do I call you? God or just Savior? My Earth name is Charlie. Charlie Hansen. I ain't a politician, I'm just a bad musician What you gonna do for me? Do you have a taste for sex and blood and hate or really good LSD? I like to start a band with you I'll sing and you can learn to play the tambourine Here's an invitation, no time for hesitation Come and join my family I live inside of you but you don't belong to me I'm a reflection of you What's my recipe? A half a cup satanical A teaspoon puritanical Stir with a bloody hand A quarter cup messiacal A sprinkle of maniacal Now I'm a mechanical man I'll give you the heads up Come on and get your legs up This is called the family jam Together we'll stay hidden away for Armageddon Stick it to the man I live inside of you But you don't belong to me I'm a reflection of you What's my recipe? A half a cup satanical A teaspoon puritanical Stir it with a bloody hand a quarter cup mosaical, a sprinkle of maniacal, now I'm a mechanical man. <laughs> Watch this chick, woman. I'm gonna learn something right now. Open up the curtains, then we'll start a hurting. Come on, let's do the creepy crawl. The show's about to go down, come on, I got the lowdown, together will my call it will fall. I live inside of you, but you don't belong to me. I'm a reflection of you, what's my recipe? I live inside of you, but you don't belong to me. I'm a reflection of you. Look at me, what do you see? A half a cup satanical, a teaspoon puritanical, stir it with a bloody hand. A quarter cup of cycle, a sprinkle of maniacal, now I'm a mechanical man. I left with him the next morning without even fearing what the future would bring. I trusted him and knew he would save me and open my eyes to a new world. He introduced me to the other girls and guys who he called his family. I didn't mind sharing him with the other girls and guys. Because when you were in the family, you were one. The more I knew him, the closer I became to the truth. And the truth was that Charlie was the truth. The truth, the light, the savior, God, and a really good fuck. Hey, mister, you want something to drink? Paycheck whore? Where's a dollar bill gown to a funeral? Of hope and love? Jeez, I was just wondering if you were thirsty. Them and us, it's all just a game. They have been selling you a phony fake picture of reality all of your life. There is you first, and I am what you let me be. I'm a guitar, a cup of coffee, a snake, a pocket full of names and faces. 
Look down on me and you will see your fool. Look up at me and you will see your lord and master. Get even and look at me and you'll see yourself. <laughs> then I guess I need a shave. Stop being so literal, woman. I see your minds are still confused and contaminated with this land and the influence of your daddies. You guys are stuck play-acting as humans. I don't need to be a human. You don't need to be a human. You must leave everything behind and come with me to the desert. It will be our promised land, our upside-down river. We can do everything and anything there without anyone telling us what to do. Put your trust in me, and you will be rewarded. I will set you free. So we began our new lives in this wondrous land where there was no time, no birthdays, and nothing that represented that dead world that had poisoned our hearts and minds. This place is the now. This is the beginning and the end. I have delivered you into the promised land, away from the waste that they call civilization. You are my children and I will protect you from the enemy that spits at you. And my children will have my children, and we will build our tribe and take over the world. We will teach them how to take care of the land, and we will do it with love, and if they won't listen, we will have to. What's that, Charlie? We couldn't hear you. Oh, nothing. All right, Charlie. We love you, Charlie. Where are we supposed to go to the bathroom? Life in the desert was wondrous. And for me to try to explain any particular day is impossible. It is impossible because each day was completely different from the next day. Each hour different than the next hour. And I am not just talking about us changing outfits, wearing funny hats, and speaking in English accents. Well, we did that, but... But the point is, it was moment to moment. As time went by, others would join us in the desert, and they were all beautiful and shared Charlie's... our... point of view on the world and how we had to change it. We never wanted to leave our sanctuary, our Atlantis... But when we did leave for the other world, it was only for food. We found all our food in garbage dumps at the supermarkets. Our family was growing and I was going to have Charlie's baby, so we needed lots of food to survive. The dumpsters were filled with lots of food that was thrown away just because it was bruised and was not pretty enough for the bourgeois consumer to buy it. Our best dumpster diver was Squeaky. She was named that because she squeaked like a mouse when Charlie fucked her. But between me and you, I think she was faking. Oh, garbage dump, oh, garbage dump. Can you believe this? How can anyone throw away such a fine apple? Oh, how much pressure it must be to live your life around an expiration date. Now, let's get back to work, girls. We've got a family to feed. Such a disgrace. All this food just being thrown away. Who could do such a thing? If I ever find out who these wasteful pigs are, I'll show them an expiration date. <laughs> garbage dump, oh, garbage dump. There's nothing better than driving around town in a big car for no apparent reason. Just driving around polluting the precious environment. Global warming? <laughs> Why not? I love to tan. Take that, Mother Nature, you fucking bitch. There goes the ozone layer. Oh, you're just so incorrigible. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I'm just trying to do my decadent best. Why don't you sing a song about it? Why? I think I will. I'd rather strangle a tree than hug it. Wrap my hands around its trunk and tug it. Rip it up from the ground, chop it up, pass around. It's logs for burning, yes, burning. I love it. I'd rather strangle a tree than hug it. The tree's life support, unplug it. 
Who needs a tree? Not me. Screw your ecology. Keep your environment. Shut it. Rainforest, main forest. Fuck it. Strangle a tree, then hug it. It's a much better place without it. Get out of my face. I need a wide open space. Beverly Hills, we love it. Eucalyptus, elm, and palm. I choke them with my bare arm. Cherry and cedar and maple. Will serve me much better as table. Cypress, sequoia, and pine. I'll strangle them one at a time. Strangle a tree than hug it. She'd rather strangle a tree than hug it. I'd rather strangle a tree than hug it. I'd rather strangle it. That was great, but your hair got a little messed up during that extravagant musical number. Never you mind, Mr. Gay Hairdresser Man. I come fully prepared. Between this car and that hairspray, the ecosystem is history, which sometimes frightens me. Are you putting me on? Why do you give a flying fuck about ozone depletion? I may freckle. <laughs> I live for the moment. That's my motto. Oh, and two cocks are better than one. That's my other motto. Oh my god, that's my motto too. Oh my god. <laughs> But I shouldn't be surprised because you've had more cocks than teeth in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sharon, where the fuck are we? This neighborhood looks positively middle class. Look at those messes. If you drove me to the valley, I would stab you to death and rip your baby out of your stomach and fuck it. Just kidding, babe. God damn, I am funny. Look at those awful hippie girls in the dumpster collecting rotted food. Their hair is so flat. It saddens me that a beautiful movie star like you has to witness such a disgusting spectacle. Let's get out of this place. Don't be such a pussy. Stop using derogatory words about my asshole. <laughs> Look at those animals. How disgusting! I hope my baby will never come across such crass people. Don't worry, sweetie. The only place we'll see those creatures is in a zoo. I love that we are so much better than they are in every possible way. Find anything nice in the trash can, scumbags? Hopefully you will find some makeup. My god, it's one thing to be trash picking, but to trash pick and not wear makeup? That's pathetic. How are you supposed to find a man? Or maybe you don't like men. <laughs> <laughs> look, sister, a woman should not have to alter her looks just for the approval of a man or the status quo. Hopefully, we can all be individuals and live as one, loving each other and loving this beautiful planet. Maybe one day everyone will all join hands and be as one, and they will call it Hands Across America. It's a dream, but sometimes dreams do come true. And then the next thing you know, a beautiful cycle will be born. Look, the only cycle I want is a menstrual cycle, so I can stop wearing these maternity tents. Hands across America? Like that would ever happen? You hippies are such hopeless dreamers. What you should be dreaming about is better clothes than some shampoo. We're not hippies. We are slippies. Oh, for God's sakes. Look, you smell, your clothes look like shit, and that shitty music you listen to with those long, horrible guitar solos. I don't have time for this. I gotta go. You've achieved an amazing feat. You've not only bored me, but my feet is too. What about me? She bored me too. Oh, please. You geek boys are always bored. 
That's why you always go from cock to cock, because you're always bored and unsatisfied. That by making it impossible to have a long, happy relationship with someone, you turn to booze and drugs to cover up your sadness and loneliness. You'll eventually die alone with a huge collection of beautiful china that will get thrown away or sold at your parents' garage so for five cents apiece. God, I need a drink. Me too. Let's make it a strong one. My baby has been craving a martini all morning. Toodles, girls. Keep in touch, but I seriously doubt we'll ever meet again. Unless you can drive that dumpster to Beverly Hills to my fabulous mansion. How appropriate. <laughs> hey, you pieces of shit. Get the hell out of my trash bin. Why don't you hippies get jobs so you can afford real food? We're not hurting anyone, Mr. Italian Grocery Man. Besides, you threw it away. These fruits and vegetables belong to the people. Correction comes, Sponge. It's my food, my fucking dumpster. Look, if I took a shit and didn't flush it, it doesn't mean you can scoop my feces and eat it for free, does it? Well, it depends if you eat meat. We're vegetarians. Why don't you leave us alone anyway? We're not hurting anyone. Not yet. <laughs> God, the baby's coming! Do you want to fuck first? You know I like them young. No time, Charlie. All right, maybe just a little oral. I can be a little... God, the pain, I can't stand it. Ah, I'm frightened, Charlie. Woman, fear is only another form of awareness. And awareness is just another form of love. Total fear is total awareness. Once you give in to the fear completely, it ceases to exist. And all that is left is awareness. All that is left is love. Oh. Well, when you put it that way, here you go. Catch! The sun of the Son of God. The birth was a miracle. It seems that nothing could destroy our world, but one day it happened. News came that would change our lives forever. Holy shit! It says that they're going to be filming a movie in our desert called The Valley of the Hogs with that nature hating actress Sharon Haight. It also says if she likes it, she will be building a huge mansion here. Wouldn't you know this would happen right after we put the hot tub in? And wait, there's more! In an unrelated article, it says that the mean grocer that was so rude to Squeaky is going to expand this supermarket chain and build five markets in our desert. Really? It says that? Let me see it. Uh, no. I was nice enough to read it. You can be nice enough just to sit there and listen. I wonder what we should do. Bring the album. In times of crisis, we sought answers from Charlie's four prophets from Liverpool. They would record messages to him on records to tell him what to do. They were like the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but with English accents. I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. Did you hear that? It said Charlie, get some members of the family to kill that star Sharon hate. That scrawled insane political messages in her blood all over her house, and this will scare the other stars from coming to the desert to film movies. With all that grieving going on, there will be no time to build supermarkets in the desert. This will spread all over the world how we save this precious land. And then a revolution will start making the earth free of these monsters. It is time for Helter Skelter!
It is not my message, but I hear what it relates. And it says, rise. It says, now is the time to kill. It's so clear. Thanks, guys. Wow, you're really good at reading between the lines. I thought it was about a hand job. The crickets are all cricking in the hills And we'll be sneaking through the doors that be a lockin' But we're open with that knocking. The windows will be prying We're barely even trying It's as though we've been invited Do come in. We'd be delighted Excuse our petty fussing But this house looks disgusting Bad taste is just a sickness Here's a cure We'll just make ourselves at home Mix it up and change the tone Su casa es mi casa, that's for sure do the creepy crawl, sneaky freaky creepy crawl. Creeping while you're sleeping, we'll be sneaking through your halls. Do the creepy crawl, sneaky freaky creepy crawl. Just relax, this ball of wax is what we call the creepy crawl. This room needs decorating, it's confusion we're creating. We'll rearrange the fixings in the bedrooms, in the kitchens. We'll move what's been familiar, ordinary is now peculiar. Because of our investing, now your lives are interesting. Excuse our petty fussing, but your lives are so disgusting. Mediocrity's a sickness, we're the cure. We'll just make ourselves at home, shake it up, and change the tone. To be frank, you should enjoy our little tour. The creepy crawl, sneaky freaky creepy crawl. Creeping while you're sleeping, we'll be sneaking through your halls. Do the creepy crawl, sneaky freaky creepy crawl. Just relax, this ball of wax is what we call the creepy crawl. Do the creepy crawl, sneaky freaky creepy crawl. Do the creepy crawl, sneaky freaky creepy crawl. Do the creepy crawl, sneaky freaky creepy crawl. We had no choice but to fight. Our lives and the future of the planet was at stake. We were all in it together. We were a family. We called each other brother and sister. We called each other that for as long as I could remember. The girls have always been my sisters. And the boys have all been my brothers. And we were not going to let those pigs ruin our lives. We had to fight back. Only through killing could there be peace. The revolution was about to begin. Helter Skelter was indeed coming down fast. Helter Skelter was all we talked about from then on. It was to be the last war on the earth. It would be all the wars that had been fought, built one on top of the other. Something that no man could conceive of in his imagination. You can't conceive of what it would be like to see every man judge himself and then take it out on every other man all over the face of the earth to save the earth. And besides, why the fuck would anyone build a chain of supermarkets in the middle of the desert? So the family would embark on a brand new adventure, leaving their beloved desert to fulfill the wishes for their master. And were they saving the world, or were they destroying it? It would have been up to anyone's interpretation, but as fate would have it, the book and the power is in the hands of the nomad. And it is he who interpret the book's message, and it is he who has the control. So would the family be heroes, or villains? Or would the actress and her friends be victims or an evil that has to be stopped? He now has the power. He now has the power. He now has the power. All right, you guys, you look just great in those creepy crawly outfits. And no, girls, the outfits don't make you look fat. Black is so slimming. 
Now listen to Hex and do what he tells you. He will do the majority of the killing because that is a man's work. And you will do the girly stuff like decorate the walls with blood and if time permits, make some sandwiches. Also, do not instill fear in these people. You are doing them a favor and don't forget that. You are releasing them from their own hell. Wait, I forgot to tell you. They've been selling you a phony picture of reality all your life. Charlie, you already told us that. I'm a guitar, a cup of coffee. Yeah, they told us that too. I'm insane, no doubt about that. And I play faces for the clowns. But the real me is a rattlesnake, a wolf, a scorpion. Nothing I reflect to you, just what I am thinking now. I'm mad, mean, and at war with the lies, pollution, confusion, and fools who've got no intelligence. How's that? God, finally a new rant. That's great, Charlie. Now can we go? Because if we want to kill these people, I'm, I mean, save these people, <laughs> I would like to beat the rush hour. Go and do what you have to do. And don't forget, you can use the carpool lane. Super duper speedy deedly delicious. It's snow with a punch, and it's yummy, yummy in this girl's tummy. My baby will be kicking for days on this shit. Mama loves her vitamins. Shoot! Bless you, Sharon. I would have said God bless you, but who am I kidding? Fucking great quality. Hey, Abigail, could you please not smoke? I'm a child. God, you can be so insensitive at times. I'm so sorry, Sharon. What was I thinking? I'm always so fabulous, but sometimes I can be such a twat. That's okay, sweetie. Hey, does anyone have a joint? You're such an inspiration to us all. So fucking unselfish. So not a fucking cunt like all the rest. I know, I know, it's exhausting. I have to smell for two now. God, I love this woman. If only you had a thick, meaty cock between your legs instead of that hatchet worm, I would marry you in a second. And speaking of marriages, when does your husband get back from Europe? Probably when he's through fucking every last homegirl going France. <laughs> well, he's a fool to leave you for a second. Just look at you. You're a vision of beauty and wonderfulness. And in such great shape, my God, you can't even tell you're pregnant. Thanks, I know, just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you have to be a big fat pig. I'm nine months pregnant, and I've actually lost weight. The only time I want to gain weight is when I have a big fat cock stuffed into me. <laughs> Enough about me for a while. How is your poetry coming, princess? Not so good. I'm afraid all my best lines are on the mirror. <laughs> What's with this guy? He's not said a thing all night. Darling, I think he's a European or something. You know how they border on the mentally retarded. You did tell him that tonight's party theme was gang rape a go-go, didn't you? Darling, I don't think he can fuck. When I checked his toilet parts, it looked just like a mountain of foreskin and nothing else. Well, maybe he can use his mouth for sucking. God, he just sits there with that awful expression on his face. Yes, he's not retarded. He must be European, because retarded people can fuck and they can get hard. And I should know. I was mounted by the most adorable mongoloid the other night. It was divine. His cock actually expanded when it was in my ass. It took forever to get it out. Not unlike a cork in a champagne bottle, or a horny German shepherd. But I love working with handicapped people. They're so... Desperate? Well, so... Slow? I call it charity work. <laughs> My god, hey. 
to consort with those, those types of people. I mean, maybe it is acceptable to have your photo taken with one of those things for a charity luncheon or something. And let me tell you, dear sir, even then, the only way I would even touch them is if I were wearing my gloves. And let me assure you that I would burn them immediately with that hot stuff. What, what is that stuff called? The flaming stuff that lights my cigarettes. Oh, never mind. But I hear you can catch retarded. I guess I'm just a people person. I don't judge people just because they may be a tad slow or sometimes accidentally strangle cute little soft puppies with their bare, retarded hands. Because how can you tell if it is the cock of a normal or that of a cerebral palsy victim when the lights are out? And if the retarded need just a little bit more time when they're stuffing their man meat into my small, tight pink hole, well, I'm more than happy to be patient and help them. It's like my way of helping them with their mechanical skills. My generosity is well known in Beverly Hills for helping the trainables. There was a time I can remember when I was being tag-teamed by a group of these horny Down Syndrome teenagers and the lights were out and these, these four little puppies came in and they started licking my balls. And it was just so amazing because the Down Syndrome kids, they were giggling and every time they laughed, the tight little assholes just pulsed up together. And God. He's still staring at me with that stoic face of his. Hey, sweetie, you're in America now. You're not waiting in a line for a piece of bread. And speaking of lines... I want some more of these white powdery lines, but they're making my snatchel dry and brittle. Either give me a booty bump, or better yet, I want you to give my clit chub a watering with your mouth. Approach me and make me moist. Play my cunt like it's a tuba, big boy. What do you want me to do, spit on it? Sorry, sweetie. The only instrument I play is a pink flute. I'll take care of it for you, sweetie. Now just open those meat drapes and let the show begin. And let me tell you, there will be no intermission. Thanks, honey. You may be quiet, Frank, who finish me off. I don't want to come off as too dikey. All you have to do is stick your tongue out and she'll do the rest. It's like licking a meat-scented stamp. If it bothers you, just plug your nose or just think of it as an asshole in the wrong place. God, how gay can you be? Here, give me a rubber band. I'll make you a man. Now, close your eyes and think of ass. Look at me, I'm fucking a girl. I'm straight now. I'm cured. No eternal damnation for me. Can someone please get that? I'm fucking pregnant. I thought I was fucking pregnant. <laughs> oh shit, maybe I'm not that cured. God damn it, look at your asshole. It looks like a baboon's ass. I sure hope my pussy doesn't look like that when I poop out this kid. Oh, you're such a bitch sometimes. Stop teasing my mangina. What the fuck do you want, fag? I'm here to deliver some more vitamins for Miss Hate, sir. Let's see, there's, uh, 30 grams of Crystal Licious, a kilo of Pixie Dust, an eight ball of Crank and Doodle Doo, a gram of Gacked Out the Light, and, uh, oh, eh, here, here's a diet soda. Who on earth ordered the diet soda? I did, stud. Maybe you like chubby babies, but I certainly do not. Sounds like you guys are having a blast here. Seems all of Hollywood's having a party. I've been really busy tonight with some hot top superstars. Fucking goddamn, I love this town. Hardly think you've catered to anyone as famous or as fabulous as us tonight. Welcome to Planet A-List, you lesser known character. Well, that is true, but, uh, I, I just delivered to Miss Bunny Hornet's house, and she was having a real fuck fest. She was fucking with three European dudes, and boy, were they getting it on. I could tell because the whole house reeked of uncut cock. It smelled like that store, uh, Dickery Hickory Farms, uh, you know that place where they sell you cheese and meat and force those fucking free samples on you every time you pass the shop? 
And this chick was getting a lot of free cheesy and meaty samples, you know what I mean? It's strange when you think of it, because couldn't they just afford a cotton swab, for Christ's sake? And they're fucking rich! How hard is it to clean their smegma that grows underneath their foreskin? Just slide that cotton swab underneath the foreskin and get it and go around and around and around in a circle until you get that thing smothered in buttery cheese sauces. It would be like cheesy cotton candy. Mmm, cheese swab. That'd be, that'd be cheese-tastic. Now that's something, that's something I'd, uh, I'd want to sample. I'm sorry. That'll be five thousand dollars, sir. Wow, sounds like someone has foreskin fever. Here you go, you freak. Get the fuck out of here. Hey guys, can I interest you in a clock radio? Like, <clears throat> no? Well then how about a fucking sharper knife? Shit! <sighs> I hear you guys. You hate sarcasm, right? Strange. Even as I'm close to death, I can still smell a faint hit of foreskin. This death smell like head cheese? Hey, keep it down! Ooh, alright, more swingers. Come on in, cats, the water is warm. Look, guys, some more holes. Mm, and a pole. God damn it, I'm not cured. Guess it's eternal hellfire for me. Oh well. Bullshit! That's those trash picking fuck you fucks in my house! Not in my lifetime! Well, see, that's the ironic part. We are here to save you! Set you free! Hey, baby, the only thing I want you to set free is the white pea from my mancock. Now that's what I call a circumcision. Now to circumcise your head. God, oh, Haiti! You can be really inconsiderate sometimes. You think the brain marrow just washes off? Watch my hair, you asshole! This hairdo is worth more than you are. Ugh, the indignity of having to be killed by a commoner. What will the society page say tomorrow? I simply will die. Now that's what I call a close shave. God, I'm hot tonight. Don't be afraid. You should rejoice. We are angels sent down from heaven to save you. Heaven? My ass! You're probably from the valley. And God, your hair is so flat. I'm not talking hairstyle here. We're talking about salvation. Hex, will you quiet little Miss Debutante's mouth? Or you could smash her head into a million pieces. Whatever works for you. Talk about a headache. God, I am killing them tonight. My hair, my beautiful hair, you got blood all over it. Look, bitch, we have no mercy for you or your bouffant hairdo. Maybe we can rehabilitate her baby and he can join us. Oh, he is adorable. Can we keep him? Well, okay. But the little fucker's gotta drive. Well, this sucks. Who's gonna fuck me now? All my best features are on the floor. God, my butt is huge. God damn it, hey, why didn't you tell me that you could put a stack of books on that ass? Hey? Hey? God damn it, hey, will you stop sucking your own cock? Mmm. Sorry, babe, but I never knew how tasty I am. Hey, don't be so selfish. Give mama some loving. Roll over to the other side of the room and satisfy my tasty twat. It looks so lonely over there dripping its love juices all over the carpet. Oh my god, the maid is gonna kill me! Oh well. Come, sweetie, finish me off, will ya? Honey, your choice of words are not the best right now. I don't feel so good. I, I, I think I'm fading, babe. Just like a man. Whenever women want some head, they fall asleep. Uh, s see you in hell, Miss. Hey. Uh, Save me a seat. Uh, you know the worst part of dying is. You just know you're going to miss all the best parties. Ah, 
our work is done here. You know, death does smell a little like head cheese. No, that was me. What, did your cock just fart? Let's get out of here. Haiti, we really gotta talk about your comedy act. Who's up for going to Buddy Hackett's estate? Too boring to be hacked to death? Assholes. Oh! I can't believe it! What on God's green earth is going on here? What a dog! What the hell are these sickles up to now? Now in the sweet, sweet taste of Jesus Christ's mouth! I might want to get these stains out of these curtains. Or oh, in the carpets. I just vacuum the living room. All this bloody car. God, this is going to be a long day. Praise the baby Jesus. Based up on my teeth and have the nourishment he so richly deserves. Oh my dear God. God, oh, oh my sweet, thank you, delicious savior. I'm sorry to interrupt your program, ladies and gentlemen, but we just got some shocking news in Beverly Hills, where our own Nick from Channel 13 is on location. Nick? I'm here in Beverly Hills, where a gruesome crime scene has just been discovered. Last night at the fabulous mansion of the wonderful movie actress, Miss Sharon Haid, she and her rich, wonderful friends were savagely attacked and murdered. Miss Haight and her friends were in the home being fabulous when the attacks occurred. The house's carpets and drapes were also ruined, so claimed the maid of the actress. Also killed was an unknown person who wasn't even remotely fabulous, but smelled like head cheese. The actress was supposed to film a huge epic in the desert this week, The Valley of the Hogs, and will now be unavailable to film the movie. Nevertheless, the police said whoever committed this heinous crime will be in a lot of trouble if caught. Furthermore, a grocer who planned to build several supermarkets in the desert is now going to build a Sharon Haight Memorial parking lot that will cover the entire desert. Good God, that is awful news. So tragic and so sad that such a beautiful star has been dimmed forever and those poor drapes and carpets in her house. I know how hard it is to get blood out of shag carpeting. My wife was having a real heavy flow day the other day and was bleeding like there was no tomorrow. She bled everywhere, all over the rugs, the walls, and even the kitchen appliances. The house looked like a slaughterhouse. So, my condolences to the maid. She has a rough road of hard cleaning ahead of her. Oh, and my half-assed condolences to that person that was not even remotely fabulous and smelled like head cheese. I have two words for you, fella. Cotton swab. But I guess it's a little late now. Hey, let's be honest here. If you're not blonde, hot, or rich, we basically could give a fuck. No, you were nothing like that tender, delightful, and yummy Sharon Hate, who gave us many a laugh and tear in such fine films as Take This Cock and Shove It, The Felching Pig, Pepe the French Speaking Monkey, and Hooked on Hispanics Part 6. We will miss her way more than we will miss you, but at least Miss Hate will live in our hearts forever when we park our cars in her memorial parking lot. You know what we have to do, and this time I will drive. Gee, those movie stars sure do lead exciting lives. I wish something interesting would happen to us. I'm so bored. Get them goops. Blast those yellow motherfuckers. Three points for the US of A. God, I wish I had a son so I can send him to Vietnam to fight for this wonderful country. But your eggs are so saturated with martinis, it's impossible for anything to grow in there. Except for maybe ovarian cancer. You simply reek of menopause. The only thing that passes from your cunt lips is yeast, and you can't send bread to fight a man's war. Oh, I'm still fertile. But the only reason I would get pregnant by you is so that I could have the pleasure of having an abortion. Maybe you could send my aborted fetus to Vietnam. I'm sure he would fight better than you. Really? So now you're too good to have my children? 
I wouldn't want to have children with you. Because how would it look to have a newborn with a connecting eyebrow and hair on its back? We shave you, darling. We can shave the baby. God damn it. Would it kill you to be attractive? You're simply hideous. Get off my asshole, you hemorrhoid. Oh, great. A hippie. I'm sorry, but if you're collecting for UNICEF, you can count me out. I have my own problems to deal with, and besides, we're saving up for a pool. Hey, assholes! Shouldn't you be out there killing people for this country? That is precisely what I plan to do. Alright, the last time you blew it! You panicked those people last night. Don't panic these people. I'm sure they have enough on their minds. They don't need any more stress. Just cut them up like ribbons and be done with it. No one likes a show off. Be nice to them and let their spirit live in peace to infinity. Uh, Charlie, they're right over there and they can hear every word you said. Just do it. And don't forget to do something witchy! Jeez, who ever thought the Son of God would be such a hothead? Alright, people, now listen up. Relax, and nothing's gonna happen. Me and the girls are gonna brutally murder you and write on your walls with your blood. So, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Okay, let's begin. Shit, did I think that? Or did I say that? Oh, fuck it. Send his son to Vietnam. Cool. That political trip you're riding on is sure intense. I'm not even going to ask what that's all about. All right, kids, let's get out of here. We will now wait in the desert until Helter Skelter comes. God damn it! Did Charlie fucking leave? How the fuck are we supposed to get back home? Take the fucking bus? You know, for the Messiah, he sure can be selfish sometimes. From Charlie's shaft to the shaft of the bottomless pit came the locust on the earth. And they were given the power of the scorpions. They were told not to harm any green growth or any tree, but those who have not the seal of God on their foreheads. Their faces were like human faces, their hair like woman's hair. They have a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. We were in the pit with our king, and now we're waiting for revolution, and then eventually, paradise. It is here! It is over! We have won the battle! Hey, excuse me. Sorry to disturb you guys, but we're from the police department. You wouldn't happen to be those folks that have been killing all those nice people in Hollywood, are you? Looks like something that came out of my asshole this morning, but I could have swore I flushed it down the toilet. Hey, Bill. When you say that if something came out of your ass, you flush it down the toilet. You are talking about good old American poop balls, right? Grill up, Frank. Of course I am. Everyone knows that poop comes out of assholes and cocks go into them. Now how can you flush a cock down a toilet? Jeez. Would you guys stop talking about poops and cocks? Is that all you guys ever talk about anymore? Poops and cocks? Poops and cocks? Just ain't normal. Like for instance yesterday at dinner, you're all obsessed with finding them corn kernels in your stool? You kept going on and on about how you're not eating corn in weeks? I mean, who gives a flying fuck? There are more important things to talk about than what goes in or out of your anuses. 
She made me think about more important matters like capturing these killers down this hole. It is not a hole. It is a bottomless pit. Listen, hippies, get your- Oh, and also we are not hippies. We prefer to be called slippies because we slip away from establishment. Well, you're not getting away from us, you pus-filled maggots. Get them! Then, it was all over. We were taken away from our home, handcuffed like we were animals, and for what? Saving people's lives? Saving the world? I couldn't understand what was happening to us. Why was it so clear to us that Charlie was the Messiah and others were blind and deaf to this? anything to say, Mr. Hanson? And please let me remind you that no matter what you say will not matter in the slightest, because you have already been found guilty in the eyes of the press and the public. But don't let that stop you. Go right ahead and make a fool of yourself. Maybe flap your arms about and glare at the camera. The press are eating that shit up. Just a little more news time for me. There's been a lot of charges brought against me and brought against the co-defendants in this case, of which a lot could be cleared up and clarified to where everyone could understand exactly what the family was supposed to have been, what the philosophies in regards to the family were, and whether or not was any conspiracy to commit murder, to commit crime, and to explain to you who thinks with your minds? I know the only person I can judge is me. I am content with myself. These children that come to you with knives, they are your children. You taught them. I didn't teach them. I just tried to help them stand up for themselves and stand up for the environment. Most of the family were just people you didn't want. People that were left along the road. That their parents had kicked out and so I took them in. And I did the best I could in raising them and told them this. That in love there is no wrong. You eat meat with your teeth and you kill things that are no better than you are. You rape the earth and destroy its lakes and chop down its trees. And in the same respect, you say how bad and evil we are. 
You make your children what they are. I am just a reflection of every one of you. My message will last forever. Maybe this generation will look blind on my words and actions, but believe me, there will be a time when what we did here will be remembered and be honored. We are just a few. There is always your children's children, and they're coming at you. My children will one day rise. That's it? That's all you've got for us, Charlie? Not even that sappy music in the background could save that sorry-ass speech of yours. But it really doesn't matter. Jury, what do you say? We, the jury, find him and his family. Guilty. 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 It's tough. I also find you and your sad excuse for a family guilty. Guilty, I tell you. And sentenced you to death. Death by crucifixion. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say crucifixion? Please forgive me, but you have to admit there is the slight resemblance there. I mean, you will be gassed, put in the electric chair, and then hung until you're all dead. You just don't fuck with Hollywood. Do you think actresses just grow on trees or something? It will take weeks to replace that divine share in hate. WEEKS! Get them out of my sight! Prosecutor Bug, are you happy with the verdict? Yes, I'm very happy with the verdict. Thank you very much. But I cannot believe that Charlie Hanson had the gall to say that he'd be remembered forever for his crimes. And just to prove him wrong, I'm gonna write a best-selling book with plenty of pictures about him and his family. That'll show him. Will any proceeds of the book go to the Victims Fund? <laughs> of, of course not. I do need a pool, you know. I just hope my book sells a billion trillion copies. So that an entire rainforest would have to be cut down to make the books. Which will be an everlasting tribute to that wonderful actress whose life was cut down way too short. What a wonderful talent. Wonderful piece of ass, which will be missed by many. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, we were found guilty and sentenced to die. We laughed when we heard the verdict, and it still makes us laugh right now. We are the place you cannot see us. We are in your closet. In your room at night while you fuck. We whisper the message in your baby's ear while it sleeps in its crib. You can never kill us. I am safe through Charlie as your children will be. And the locust rising from the bottomless pit were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green growth or any tree. But only those of mankind who have not the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torture them, like the torture of a scorpion. So no man went back to the tribe and told the other tribesmen the tale of the Messiah sent down from the heavens to save man. He told them that Charlie is everywhere, and most importantly, he told them about Charlie's message of love and how to use that love to overtake other tribes with knives so they can also experience the love. The tale was told and then retold from generation to generation, and the legend of Charlie Hansen lived on forever and ever. Amen. Oh,